And while that was taking place, I would put a label on it. Chris's father took out some small ads in rodeo and western magazines announcing Chris's take. The business started out slow. The first week, I think we sold six. And I thought, hmm, well, people do know about it. They did see the ad. Places like feed stores and uh, western wear stores, uh, veterinary supplies. Slowly, the business began to grow. By 1973, the whole family began to pitch in. I was basically the label liquor and envelope stuffer. <laughs> we would have orders come in the mail every day, and Dad had a little office up in the woods. And after I'd get out of school, I'd go up to the woods and stuff eight tracks and albums in boxes and envelopes and ship them out UPS. And my brother, he'd go on the road and he'd set up a booth at some of the big rodeos and sell them that way. I bought a van, I put a bed in it, and just fixed it all up, and, and Chris Ledoux tapes, and I hit the road. With his father coming up with new marketing schemes and the whole family helping, Chris's tapes began to sell. Every time the end of the month finally rolls our way, we got just enough money, honey, to see that the bills get paid. In the meantime, Chris continued on the rodeo circuit, still dreaming of the gold buckle. By 1975, he was having a promising year until he encountered a horse named Cripple Creek. Chris uh, had a pretty good ride on the horse, and when he went to get off, he was you double grab, you sit up, and you're looking for the pickup man. The horse fell and kind of rolled over on His leg got pinned up underneath of him, and just imagine bending that leg sideways. With severely torn ligaments in his knee, 